Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm your host. And on this episode, I'll update you on all things that are happening at Prepare Like a Pro for the upcoming week, such as this week's episodes, our live chats, and a a power tip at the end of the episodes, improving your recovery protocols and adding in some new methods in toolbox and also a example of a typical week on the Prepare Like a Pro Online program. Make sure to hang around to the end to listen to more information on how to better yourself and ultimately improve your recovery and performance going into the next game, which is what recovery is all about. And it starts as soon as the game finishes that recovery process. Um, so I'll explain a, a typical week for a seven-day turnaround later on. But to start off, we have the upcoming Tuesday podcast, which for those podcast listeners that are familiar with our schedule, we have a Tuesday, we have a Monday, uh, Sunday live uh, weekly update, which I'm currently doing now, is released on Monday in the podcasting world. Our second episode of the week is Tuesday, which is an interview episode. We have an educational uh, presentation on Wednesdays, known as the Get Better Plan. Thursday, we have our live chats. So every I'll catch up with a guest at 3 p.m. on Thursday, which you can watch via the YouTube channel. And Friday, we have our second podcast episode interview of the week. So for this this Tuesday, we have Robert Augie, the professor and cycling coach at track he's also a sports scientist at victoria university definitely recommend listening into the episode whether you're a coach uh, working in high performance sport or you're an academic to work in the uh, high performance space at universities definitely listen into robert's story we share his journey as well as things for his career learnings he's made, mistakes he's made and uh and it's a great chat around um increasing your uh, availability across different working areas as a coach sports scientist and also lecturer um, but also to follow your passion and and create a career that you enjoy so definitely tune in for that one that will be released on tuesday this week's get better plan episode will be on wednesday on why the additional coaches must create their own job keeper this one personal to me i was this uh, at the Australian Strength and Conditioning Association present uh, conference, and the recording is now going to be released on our podcast. So, if you didn't uh, make that ASCA conference, make sure to tune in on Wednesday where you can listen in. Uh, this is the um, reason why you want to not only create social content, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, but also create searchable content and how important that is for coaches that need to be seen and want to develop a brand. Uh, discuss the importance of. Uh, really owning your unfair advantages. So by that uh, might be that you've done a PhD on nutrition. So really owning that as that's an unfair advantage in a head of market. So the point of standing out in a competitive market and really taking it. So for all the developing strength industry coaches or those developing a business that are interested in developing your own brand, hopefully you pick up some tips and tricks and, and things that have helped me along the way. Uh, and more recently in 2020, uh, when I lost my job at the Hawks and need to uh, find a new financial uh, income and, and income stream. So it goes for about uh, 60 minutes. And if you have any questions or queries after listening to the podcast, feel free to reach us on either Instagram uh, or you can get it at jack at preparelikeapro.com to send us an email. Our Thursday live chat this week. Um, at our normal time at 8.30 p.m. Australian, Daryl Griffiths, who's the founder of Coda Nutrition. Um, we had uh, to have a few samples of his product, and he's definitely doing different things compared to the rest of the market where he has an individualized approach with their supplement. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with Daryl, who's got a coaching background, and he's got a great um, philosophy in terms of how to fuel for performance. So for the athletes this is one you will not want to miss if you have any questions on uh, particularly now where we are doing our uh, practice match campaign and as uh, it's summer 
your hydration protocols um, need to be on point. So if you have any questions, maybe you've dehydrated after the weekend's game and you want to rehydrate, or how can you have a better protocol going into the next game, um, make sure to reach out. Uh, game's only getting faster, more demanding on the body, so your rehydration protocol is really, really important. And, of course, for the practitioners and coaches, uh, Daryl's worked in the industry for a long time, so you'll definitely pick up some tips and tricks on uh, how to press through your career. So that'll be 8.30 p.m. via our YouTube channel. Our Friday episode will be the bite-sized interview that we did on nutrition for high performance uh, in February. That was our collaborative event. Each set um, event will be turned into a bite-sized podcast episode, and this will be with Pip Taylor, where she discussed the different touch points that a sports dietitian needs to be used when working in sport. So if you're interested in improving your nutrition for sports performance, this is a great week on the podcast. We have Daryl Griffith uh, for his Thursday live interview and Pete Taylor's uh, recording being released on our podcast on Friday. Then our, uh, oh, that, that's Friday's episode. So now we are ready for Q&A. Got a few questions sent in as well. One from McCarthy on LinkedIn, which I'll answer around supplements to gain muscle. And we've also had Ray Simmons just send in a question around improving hip flexor flexibility and hip mobility. So we'll just I'll add those two questions in on the watch. Streaming over to Instagram. Now. G'day, Instagram world. Thank you. For joining Propeller for Pro Live Chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm the host, and I'll be discussing all things around physical preparation for football. Every week, I host a live event on our YouTube channel and then stream onto our Instagram to answer any questions that have been sent to us via email or via direct message. So, if you're listening live, you can send through your questions by hitting the question button at the bottom of your screen, and I'll make sure to answer any your questions. Um, but what we'll first do is go into the questions that have been sent through us via the week. So starting with McCarthy via LinkedIn, he wrote, Hi, Jack. I wanted to seek your thoughts whether you think it's better to take a cream powder before a training session or after when you're looking to put on muscle. Always enjoy listening to your live shows. Thanks, James. Thanks for the question, McCarthy, and no doubt those tuning in live um want to put us all as well so it's a great question and one i wanted to add into the live chat uh, my recommendation would be if you're going to use protein powder it can be a good uh, supplement to a well um packed nutrition uh in terms of your uh, diet so mainly when i think food first how can we get protein a week uh, and really important that we're getting in some protein for those that want to put on muscle every four hours or so. So if you're using protein powder, typically if you're going from a football set and it's going to be a longer period of time and then you're going back home and you might have a 30-hour minute drive, you're not hungry, potentially straight up and, and you've got dinner waiting for you at home, that can be a good period of time to have your protein shake as well as when you're on the go um, leading up to a gym session, if you haven't eaten for, for three, four hours, I would have the protein shake in before your gym session. So you don't need your gym session in a catabolic state. But if you have a meal, let's say you're training at five in the afternoon for your gym session and you had this a afternoon snack, like a smoothie or some nuts and fruit around four, three, four o'clock, so you had a little protein hit, breakfast where you had protein, you've had your lunch, you had a couple of sources of protein for the day, then I would save your protein shake for after the um, the workout um, before your dinner. So really think about four-hour window. Um, there is no magic window in terms of having your protein straight after your meal. The most important thing in, after your workout, so the most important thing is, is getting regular protein hits throughout the day. Uh, so hopefully that helps your question. I know you did ask a follow-up question on uh, what is the best brand for protein powder and You've got a hard gain of mass from INC, but not sure if this is good. Tip four is we don't want to put on mass too quickly uh, because it can put you at a risk of uh, overload type injuries, as well as um, the detriment of putting extra weight. Your running performance will be uh, negatively affected. Whereas if we can do a gradual period of time, 
uh, let's say putting you know two kilos over a 10 week period your body's going to adjust to that graduate uh, over of that gradual gaining weight so you're much less likely to have injuries but also your power and speed um, will um, be able to be maintained during that pit so whereas if you put six kilos on within a couple of weeks um, you know rolled ankles potential um, hamstring strains calf strains things of that nature um, can be a high risk so slow burn when it comes to um, weight for footballs and, and also hard trainers are typically not as great for digestive system so they can be quite inflammatory for a lot of people and, and wreak havoc on the digestive system so by going on a slow burn anyway and just having a regular weight protein and focusing on getting calories through food generally is more sustainable for the footballer as a, at a holistic point of view obviously there's a, a individual times and everyone will have different rules for different people when it could, you know there's no right or wrong necessarily that's just my general recommendation i also would recommend with any nutrition advice to seek a, a expert in the field so making sure that you're working closely with a dietitian um, would be heavily recommend that you're um, not only improving your performance but also uh, doing it the right way next question is from ray simmons sent through via instagram Put that on our question here, and that's best exercises for improving hip flexor mobility flexibility. Great question, Ray. Um, ultimately, if you're doing a well-rounded strength program that's specific to um, athletes and not a, like a program where you've um, got it from a magazine that might be focused on other goals like weight. Lifting or bodybuilding, but it's one that is suited for for field based athletes. You should have a lot of um, unilateral exercises out of range in that program. So an exercise like a bulgarian in split squat, um, where you're taking you through your hip hip joints through that out of range on the way down of the of the bulgarian split squat, and uh, that can be a great exercise for not only improving your single leg stability and strength through your hips. As well as your, your stance leg on the foot, but also you're taking your uh, hip joint on the rear leg, good uh, out of range of motion. So that can be a great way to improve your hip flexibility and strength, and specific to the position to get into or a punch kick. So for those that listen to the Kevin Paul podcast, he just important is to have good hip extension, so your good backswing to be able to generate uh, a good amount of force into your kick. So the Bulgarian split squat is, is an exercise that he was in favor for, for for that purpose. So if that is something that you're trying to do, improving your flexor mobility and flexibility, trying to do weight room would be the best, opposed to just doing a static stretch. Then from there, once you've got, got in, you're getting in some strength work and you're working on those outer range movements in the gym, and making sure that your tissues are held through uh, seeing a masseuse, um, or doing your own myofascial release work, so using a foam roller, using a lacrosse ball, and looking after your muscle tissues so they're uh, in a great uh, position and you're not just working them out of time, but you're actually working in and restoring your range of motion from all the work that you're doing in the gym. So making sure that some of your um, sessions that you're dedicating to your body are also restoring your range of motion. Um, and that's where static stretching can be a good place is just to relax the mind and relax the body after a big session. Not only will that um, look up after your muscle tissues, so you're more likely to um, come down in your arousal level from a big football session or a game day and therefore sleep better at night. Uh, we know that a body that's well recovered is going to be more mobile and uh, more flexible opposed to one that's overworked and tired. Um, so that's a bit of a holistic uh, answer to your question, Ray. But important to work through outer ranges of motion get some frontal plane of motion work as well so like lateral squats are really good and if you go to our youtube playlist and we've got an injury prevention one and we've got a stability one so if you go to the youtube channel prepare like a pro and go to playlist there's one specifically there with drills and um how to use the lacrosse ball to improve your muscle tissue health but also how to do those exercises that i talked about those strength outer range exercises as well so just head over to the uh, Propeller Pro YouTube channel if you can't find it for 
Instagram, just on Instagram, and we'll send you the link. That's it for this week's questions. For those listening in live, feel free to send in your questions. Otherwise, I will now go to our power tip. We post game recovery day zero, day one, day two. Uh, where through is the latest methods and why it's important to make informed decisions on the methods that you used. Yeah, good to see you jump back on, mate. Hopefully the body's been good after a big game. Um, so we'll go through a bit of a protocol that I have my athletes, and that's typically plus one of a game. So if you've played on Saturday, on Sunday, going, doing some movement to promote blood flow to help the recovery. So pull is really good. It's low load on the body. And that usually, you, from an energy point of view, athletes, footballers feel for doing a good pool session. So that can be like some um, side-to-side shuffles, backwards, pedaling, um, some A skips, A's, um, some light swimming if you're a good swimmer, so freestyle, uh, breaststroke, uh, backstroke, uh, or just get the kickboard and do some kicking. So the intensity is low, but you're just really promoting some blood flow and working through some range of motion. So the, the pool can be really, really good on a Sunday. Um, no on-field session, no sprinting, no strength and no condition on that day. So we're, ultimately time is your friend when it comes to recovery and respecting that process. We can't accelerate it. Um, we can just assist it along the way. So promoting blood flow helps the recovery process. So that would be plus one of game day. Plus two, we'd move to a flush run with some mobility. So we might do t- two sets of 10 80-metre efforts at a really slow pace. and. So that might be like every 30 or every 40 seconds you go. So real cruisy, feel-good pace. And in between, you break it up with some mobility work, some around the world, hamstring scrapes, open, close the gate, karaoke, uh, some 90-90 hip stretches, um, thread the needle, so some back mobility. So really working through some ranges of motion and freeing up and ungluing the body. On that day, we typically have our main upper body lift, either on the, on the Monday plus to or if the athlete's not feeling up to a bit sore through the upper body um, and shoulders through the contact nature of the game on the weekend then we move that to minus three from the games on the on the wednesday for a saturday to a saturday game moving over to plus three from the games so typically that each day for those that are playing saturday games or on field session where that would be a craft like football session so good opportunity to work on your skill acquisition understand the tactical position of the game you might have your team review the club or, or or you have a one-on-one interview with uh, review with your coach so getting some good feedback from the game so you're very much reflecting on the weekend's performance uh, and you, you're still in that um, low into it's not our main session of the week we would have our main lower body lift however because as we know with our strength work we want to try and get that uh, at a point where you recovered enough some heavy lifting um, what we also know with heavy strength training is it's not going to beat up your rate of force development too much. So by getting it in three days post, we, we can get in some good high intensity. Uh, it shouldn't affect too much the high intensity main session on minus two from the game. So on the Thursday for those that played on Saturday. Um, and it's not too close to the game where you pretend to have some muscle soreness, which typically footballers don't want, especially in their lower body. If your GPS is quite low in volume, that's when we might do a bit of top-up conditioning session on that plus three. Um, but if you're in a good spot, you hit your game loads and you're not coming out of lab or you're, you didn't have a bye weekend, then typically there'd be no conditioning on the first field session. Plus three, if, you've, if you did your upper body strength session for the week and you're not looking to gain muscle mass or you, part of your athletic plan isn't to um, get super strong during the season then we just have a rest day so good opportunity for the semi-professional athletes or those in school to just focus on other things um so your other stresses in life aren't becoming overwhelming then minus two that's where we have our main field session of the week so that might be some match play drills a couple of drills that you're really going after and trying to bring above match intensity to help prepare for the fame ahead if you need some speed exposure, we'd do that over some flying 40 meter efforts. So trying to get you above 90% of max velocity, and that's all relative to you. So finding out where your max is and working at 90% above of that. And then the strength session would be an injury prevention based work. So some outer range eccentrics like Nordics, um, Copenhagen's, 
and uh, so some unilateral work as well. So some lunging or bulgarian split squats that I could talk about. Low volume, and we're just um, looking at trying to make sure we're keeping some good strength levels um, so we're not losing all that great work that we did over the off-season, pre-season. Uh, and we're keeping the body um, well prepared for that week's game. Then we have minus one from the game. We would do no dedicated recovery work unless an athlete wanted to, no on-field session unless you've got a captain's run, um, no sprinting, but we would, however, have a primer session most of our athletes on the program. So that's primer session I presented on last week with the athletes where you either have a heavy upper body lift into some explosive work and some mobility or some arms and abs, or the other group who only want to focus on power, they do like a med ball circuit, some ex high explosive fast paced movements, some pogo jumps or some low level plyometrics. Uh, and that's it. So it's about a 15, 20 minute session, but it's all about quality and intent to move fast. And that just uh, upregulates their nervous system a little bit. So gets some gets the uh, competitive juices going if if you want to use velocity based training. But ultimately it's just focused on um, not having a big lay through to Saturday by just getting some good high energy work in um, on the Friday. Athletes feel like they can start the strong going into the Saturday game. If they've got a game on Saturday, so then from there, it's just simply playing the game. Nothing before, nothing after. If they don't have a game, they've got to buy that week. We may do a conditioning session. That just depends on how what part of the competition we're in. Are we preparing for a finals campaign? Uh, or do we have a buy only three weeks ago? So therefore, we want to load out that, that weekend and we have a game condition session uh, uh, on the field. Week for a seven to seven day so, like I mentioned, if you need any help and you're not on our uh, program, you can go on our program uh, for a 14 day trial. Head over to propellerpro.com and there's a website page called Free Program and the link is in our show. So if you're listening in the podcasting world, make sure to check out that program for 14, 14 days from start of, as of today. I also YouTube, make sure to check that out. I'll add that in the show notes so you can have a recovery, uh, recovery protocols and some drills uh, and how to follow those exercises so you know um, how they feel and how they should look. And then from there, uh, we've got this week's review is from he wrote really good podcast to gain more knowledge and insight from uh, into the football world, provides extremely useful information. You can use it all in football. Endeavors. Thanks, Lucas. The review goes a long way into helping us grow and also reach more people to listen to the podcast. It'd be greatly appreciated. Write us a review on iTunes and rate us on Spotify. 